on the Holy and Ecclesiastical Calendar. Today we celebrate the ascension of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a vital day in our church, and we should do more to announce it, to celebrate it, and encourage more and more people to be here for this. This is an important moment. We have seen through the course of Nativity, Great Lent, Pascha, and all these Sundays after Pascha, the life of Christ represented in his birth and the miracles that he performed in his ministry to announce the coming of the kingdom. The unbelief of the people, the doubt, the punishment that they gave to him, his crucifixion, his resurrection, and now his ascension into heaven, body, soul, and spirit. Today is an auspicious day. Think about what Luke is telling us. In this narrative, Christ is saying, feed me. They gave him fish and a honeycomb. He is asking for this to show the proof of his full humanity. Then he ascends into heaven, showing full proof of his divinity. All of this, my dear brothers and sisters, is the revelation of the one God in Trinity. One essence is the divinity which we worship. Three persons in the God Father who creates, the God Son who redeems, and the God the Holy Spirit who sanctifies. We are at this feast to look up to heaven and fix our eyes there. We are to pray with the holy angels, with the saints, with the Holy Mother of God, who is supreme of us all, who gave herself body, mind, and spirit, to that who would be her son and her God in heaven. Our prayers are about putting ourselves inside of the presence of God. He is never not here. He is never not within us. His godliness is never not literally in our DNA. But how often we forget, how much do we want to forget we want to be more human than human, which means we embrace the life of sin. We embrace life of power and corruption and money. We embrace a life that is not of God or for God, with God or in God. We say all too often, I will get to you some other time. And he always bids us to him, asks us, could you not spend an hour with me? Our job in this world is to be like students in a school, preparing for the heavenly kingdom that is to come. Our singular job is to be with him in every possible way, which is why he gives us the church to help bring us back in, to get the lost sheep, and not just to be within the four walls, but to participate in the sacraments as forgiveness of sins, have the body and blood of Christ. That is, of course, after being baptized and chrismated. We have anointing for the sick, holy orders, marriage. These are the things that were given to us to draw us back into Christ. That is what this last narrative with Jesus is. He's saying, come back to me, draw near to me. All of you know that you're sinful. All the apostles are sinful. All of the Gospels in Great Lent point that out. <clears throat> and here we have in the Sundays of Pascha, those who doubt, those who are sick, those who are blind, those who are maimed, those who don't live the life that Christ asks, like the Samaritan woman. This day is for you. This day is for me. This day is for all of us to be reminded Yes, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. John tells us this. Paul tells us this. And Christ says in the Gospel of John that they may be one as you and I are one. I and you and you and me and us and them and them and us. Who do you think that means? Enter the divine cloud. 
Make God the focus of your life. The work, the family, everything else, that's secondary. We've come to believe in our society that all of that is primary, and this is secondary or tertiary. No. Okay? We must work. We must live. We must deal with family and friends. But our world is awash in information, in technology, in industry, in theory, in practice, in hatred, self-loathing, injustice, war, plague, desolation. Those were the sort of things that Christ visited upon Egypt to let Pharaoh know you are not with the one God. And could we not now interpret these signs without an attempt to create fear and panic among people? Could we not look in our midst and say, don't we have all of these things present here and now? Christ himself says, you look at the weather and say, hey, a storm is coming, but you cannot read the signs of the times. Can we not read them? Can we not get on our knees? Can we not prostrate just a little bit more? Ask forgiveness and then mean it. I'm going to be different today and tomorrow. And when I fall again, I'm going to get back up. And I'm going to keep going because I'm marching not to the bank, not to the store, not to my home, not to my school, not to any place else but the heavenly kingdom. The altar is a staircase that leads us to the kingdom if we want. He wants. He's infinitely far but intimately close. He says, I am here. His mother says, I will hold you. Ask her, give me your heart, Mary. Please. The most Holy Spirit, sanctifying, if only we were open. My dear brothers and sisters, there's great joy, love, and mercy in our Lord who invites us to that heavenly kingdom. We're free. Don't we know that? We are free. We are free. We know what the end is. It's not keeping it a secret. And it's for everybody. So we've got to start living that way. Teach me, O oh Lord, to live, for I am free to be in Him, and Him in me, and all of us. May God keep you this day and every day as we go forward, as we look forward to Pentecost and the descent of the Holy Spirit. We've been around for all of creation. But we were made to recognize this is God. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son.